Are you gonna... Is that your spot now? All right. Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday today, which makes it time to catch up with a brand new vlog this afternoon. And it should have already happened by the time you get to this video. So I'll just link in the description so you can find out the end of the story. But this afternoon they're doing a Reddit AMA, which is an ask me anything. So basically a developer interview through Reddit rather than through video. I don't remember the last time that we got a Reddit AMA. In my opinion, the main difference between Reddit and the video for this sort of Q&A thing is that on Reddit, it's going to be much more obvious if they are dodging hot issues because those will be the there's banging going on inside those will be the issues that are highly upvoted so if they're only answering questions about uh, war mode transmog or something like that then it'll be really obvious what they're skipping so there's going to be a little bit more pressure I think to tackle the the hotter button issues how happy people will be with the answers remains to be seen but my prediction is that they will at least attempt to address the things that the community is most upset about the biggest one I feel that's recent is the warfront problem where not only did horde get access to warfronts first and therefore got a guaranteed 370 piece of loot and spammable 340s compared to the alliance that got one zone of rare worth of 340s and a chance at a 370. So Horde got more loot for the first week, but they actually hotfixed an item level requirement onto Warfronts. So early on, Horde could just queue without even being 320, and by the time Alliance get it, we will have to be 320. And these gear disparities very well could have an impact on the mythic race that's happening right now. So that's a pretty hot button issue. Would you like down? Hi. So that's obviously not great. I think they could have released Warfronts either earlier or later or made them cycle faster so that both factions would have had a crack at it before the mythic opens. I think it's too late for all of that now, and there probably isn't a whole lot to be done at this point. Lessons for next time, I suppose. My main BFA concern for right now is that I feel like we're kind of headed for a little bit of a warlordy situation, except that with warlords, the situation was that there really wasn't a lot to do. There wasn't really enough activities. I think with BFA, there's lots to do, but the incentives for doing it have gotten so mixed up and undervalued that it's not gonna really feel like there's a reason to do it. An example of this is world quests, I think are going to be a lot less appealing once more people start reaching Exalted with all of the factions. I know plenty of people are already there, but because there is no Paragon rep cache of any kind with mounts or without mounts, there's no reason really to continue getting rep with a faction after you've gotten Exalted with it. So that takes out a whole lot of reason to do world quests right there. Add into that that there's no combat followers giving you extra gold or resources on world quest completion, so there's some incentive gone. Add into that that war resources are essentially going to be mostly just for bonus rolls. You use them for the mission table, but the mission table has been so far devalued. The fact that the gold missions are basically negligible. The fact that the rep missions will again be useless once you're exalted with the reps. I'm only really running missions for pet charms at this point, so I almost don't even care about war resources anymore. And then Azerite is just a whole different thing that I'm not even going to really get into because there's just so many different angles of why it's not great right now. But something that did strike me as bizarre this week, uh, the first wing of LFR is out now. So I went and looked to see what I would get for doing that and looked at the loot that could drop and looked at the fact that you don't get Azerite for raiding and there's no raid rep and... Uh, you know, I'm not trying to get a tier bonus. Not that I'm wanting tier back. I'm still pretty happy that we lost that one, but there's really no reason for me to even do LFR. And I guess that's totally fine as a normal heroic raider, but just in general, I used to feel like I would get more by actually playing the game. And I'm struggling to find those activities that feel really rewarding in a repeatable way that won't run out once I'm exalted with reputation. I definitely do still feel inspired to chase cosmetics, so I want reps for the rep mounts, I want island expeditions for the mounts and pets there, I want to keep doing dungeons for the dungeon mounts and pets, and I want to keep doing warfronts for the warfront mountain pets. So maybe that's the strategy. It'll take a while to get all the cosmetics, and by the time we finally have all the cosmetics from island expeditions and warfronts and whatever, that they'll just add new stuff. Maybe that's what's gonna happen. I don't know, I could be approaching this the wrong way, and I would love to hear what you guys think on that. Speaking of raid, actually, I have been having a blast in Old Year with my guild. We are now officially 8 of 8 normal. We finally cleared uh, Gahoon last night, and we are 3 of 8 Haruk. We killed Talik, Mother, and then Zekvaz. I think we're gonna try Fed. We heard that Fed and Devourer was a bit of a gear check, so we figure we're gonna try him next week after another normal clears worth of gear. But Gahoon was actually really, really fun. And maybe that's because I was on the floor team. I didn't have any ball running to do, so I didn't have to worry about that, which made it significantly less stressful for me. I just kind of got to sit down on the floor, dodge stuff, and like dot things. That was kind of fun, but we killed Gahoon. And, and I got my offhand off of Heroic Mother, which meant I could wear the main hand I got off of Normal Zul, which means I got to throw away my 325 staff. I got five item levels. 
just from that upgrade. It took me from 344 up to 349, which is where I'm at now. And I actually, you know, now that I'm almost 350, starting to feel competent in world quests now, almost. I can kill things pretty effectively, but they do still really hurt. Something else I'm really enjoying about Raid this tier that actually kind of surprised me is I really like personal loot. And the thing that I really like about it is that one, it keeps us rolling through the raid as opposed to having to wait after every boss for the loot cancel members to finish their stuff and catch up. And secondly, I have way less loot anxiety now because I get to find out whether or not I got something really quickly and then it's over. In not just WoW, but in a lot of things, there is nothing I hate more than limbo of not knowing how something's going to turn out that I'm invested in. I hate that. So in the past, whenever a piece of loot dropped that I really wanted, but I was competing with a couple of other people for it, you have to wait. And that waiting is just not my cup of tea. And now the fact that I can just find out and move on with my life feels way better. So that's been good. Also this week, they launched the BlizzCon virtual ticket, so there's some goodies associated with that. And that has been really stressing me out because I didn't get my email. Like I have a ticket, I bought a ticket through somebody that had bought a ticket and it got forwarded to me, my details were changed, I got the email. But I didn't get the email with my barcode and my virtual ticket code on it. And it seems like everybody else did and nobody else is having this problem. So that's been really stressing me out. I was looking online to try and find a place where I could file a support ticket with the BlizzCon support to try and get that figured out. And whenever it makes you think that you're about to be able to file a ticket, it just directs you to a support article that is not about the thing I'm having a problem with. So I ended up sending an email to BlizzCon support and hopefully they can sort me out. This whole going to BlizzCon thing is so far just been so stressful. I just hate traveling to the point that I'm kind of hoping that when I go, it's a little underwhelming so that I can justify not going. <laughs> in the future. I like the virtual ticket. I like watching the convention from here. I'm sure it'll be really cool. I'm sure everything will get sorted out. It's all going to be okay. Or at least that's what I keep telling myself. In my life this week, I turned 26 last Saturday. Thank you all very much for your birthday wishes. I had a great day. My husband and I went out and looked at some fish and we went to lunch and we came back and we did my hair, which you probably noticed. <laughs> It came out a little bright. I wasn't going for quite this bright, but I don't hate it. Depending on the camera I'm using, it varies between like Little Mermaid Elmo Red and just a neon fuchsia. It's pretty pink in person. It'll fade. <laughs> It's not the worst thing that's ever happened to my hair. And then also thank you to everyone that has been supporting the merch. There are five days left on this design, the 100K. That's going to be available until Wednesday the 19th. So it'll be gone after that. And I believe that's also when the printing process begins. Questions from this week. Beto asks, what features from other games that you've played would you like to see implemented in WoW someday? I would love to see Black Desert Online style, mount taming and breeding. In Black Desert, you can go and actually catch horses and improve your skill at catching horses. You can breed them together to make better horses. It's this whole thing. And in WoW, I definitely don't think that breeding faster mounts would work in, in WoW, but I do think that they could add a system where you can tame mounts. And I also think that they could do a thing where you are breeding those tamed mounts together to get cosmetic varieties only available through mount breeding. I don't know if they would ever do it, but that was like my favorite part of BDO aside from like excessive turnip farming, which we already got in WoW, so we've been there. But yeah, that would be cool. Chelsea asks, Hi Hazel, we just got a bed of fish for my son. Any brands of food you feed your fish that you prefer? Also, what other fish products do you prefer for your fishy friends? We want to expand to more than one, but we're starting out small for now. So first of all, uh, excellent choice starting out with a betta tank. I firmly believe that is the best beginner fish that you can get and the best beginner tank you can do. So good job there. For food, I have been feeding him Northfin betta bits, but I think I'm going to be trying out the Hikari bio gold pellets. Um, definitely pellets over flakes. They're easier to control how many you're feeding and you don't want to feed too many. All of my other fish have been doing really well on Hikari foods and those are the ones they prefer the most. I'm going to try out the betta formula for that. And then for other stuff, Sea Chem Prime is my water conditioner of choice. It's so concentrated that you need very little of it. Um, I use one drop for every two liters or two drops per gallon. And when I'm doing a water change on that, it works out to like three, maybe four drops. And I change a lot of water. So one bottle that lasts you ages. It will also help neutralize ammonia and nitrites if you are doing a fish in cycle. The other thing that I just really recommend that they're not going to tell you about in pet stores is a sponge filter. So those look like this. I have one in every one of my tanks. For the next question, I got a couple of different tea related questions from a couple of different people. So I'm going to consolidate all of that info here. As far as metal straws being hot when you use them, I will say that I only use metal straws with a tea that I've added milk to. 
and that kind of cools the tea down. So I've never had problems with it burning my lips. And then for tea recommendations that are high in caffeine and strong in flavor for people that are trying to switch over from sweet coffee or soda, the Paris tea from Harney. So brew that in hot water, three and a half to four minutes, add a little bit of milk and then either some sugar or sweetener or just try it on its own. But that's a really good one. And then the masala chai from Adagio tea has a lot of flavor going on in it and a fair amount of caffeine too. So those are my two recommendations for that. Last, Mooney asks, what are you most looking forward to spending your Polish pet charms on? So there is a pet from the Horde pet vendor called Lil Benfon. Um, I'll put his model up here. Super cute, can't wait for that. So that one costs 300 pet charms and you actually, not only is he on a Horde only vendor, but you have to complete a Horde quest line in order to unlock him on that vendor. So I'm gonna need to play some Horde at some point, but I'm, I'm going to do it because I, I need that. <laughs> In any case, that has been my week. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing some of you on this afternoon's live stream starting at 3 p.m. Pacific time. If you have any questions for the vlog, leave them as comments and include the word questions so that I can find it and have a wonderful, wonderful day.